Hi, I'm Brent Stover, and this is the World's Strongest Man Archives, 1979. This is the year the United Kingdom elected its first female prime minister, Margaret Thatcher, later dubbed the Iron Lady. Among Iron Men, Bill Anderson became the UK's inaugural World's Strongest Man competitor. Two-time defending champion Bruce Wilhelm did not compete, leaving a new batch of Americans, including Bill Kazmaier and Don Reinhout, to fend for the title. You're watching CBS Sports Network and the world's strongest man from Universal City. Welcome everyone to the Universal Studios Tourist Center here in beautiful Southern California. Also welcome to the third annual World's Strongest Men competition here on the CBS Sports Spectacular. These ten behind me will decide who is really the strongest. Bodybuilder Mr. Universe Dave Johns. Of the Pittsburgh Steelers John Cole. The big army lieutenant from Sweden Lars Hedlund. Billy Kazmaier, the national powerlifting champion. Joe Doobie, the former world Olympic lifting champion. Cleve Dean, the arm and wrist wrestling champion of the world. Big Bill Anderson from the Highland Games in Scotland. Don Reinhout, the world record holder in powerlifting. Jerry Blackwell, a professional wrestler. And from the St. Louis Cardinals, Bob Young. My analyst here for CBS is Dr. Terry Todd, a former powerlifting champion himself. And Terry, I take it that is the trophy that will go to the winner and the champ. Yes, they're going to fight hard for it, too. They're, they're all ready, as you can see. Now, people have been doing these strongman things for hundreds of years long before team play, but they really do like to get together, and money is probably secondary, even though there is some. Yes, I think money is secondary. These men want to represent their various right. sports, and we've tried to get events that uh, are fair to everyone. All right, so that the smaller men. Now, what about the size of this field? Is this the biggest group together you've ever seen? As far as I know, these, this is the biggest group of athletes ever assembled for athletic competition. Last year, the men averaged about 285. This year, they average about three and a quarter. They average three and a quarter? Ten men, 325 average. Then basically they could be ten of the strongest men in the world. Oh, is that no true? No question about that. Okay, the first event today is going to be, of course, the barrel lift and then the steel bar bending. That's in today's program. But first we've got to see how we're going to judge some of these contestants. And we do have a few, uh, a few little things to show other kinds of ways of being strong too, don't we? Yes, some old circus stunts. We're going to recreate them also. What are those going to be like? Well, driving nails with your bare hands through a board, blowing up a hot water bottle pulling a heavy tram with your teeth, <laughs> things right. like that. All right, let's get on with the competition. But first, let's look at the overall point breakdown and how we're going to find out who is the world's strongest man. Terry, how do you come up with a bunch of beef and potatoes like this from around the world? These guys represent various sports in which strength is important. They were selected by a group of experts in the field of strength. Each competitor is guaranteed $2,000 against bonus money. But when you see what the bonus money is, you'll know why they're so serious and why they try so hard. Yeah, that'll buy a lot of that beef and potatoes. $10,000 for first place, total bonus prize money of $25,000. And check out this point system, which will be used for nine of the ten events. Ten points for first place, $50 per point, and we're going to be here for the next five weeks. Terry, the barrel lift is a little bit more difficult than it looks like, huh? Yeah, Tom, it's much, much harder than with a, with a barbell. The 200-pound barrel would be like a 400-pound barbell. And the shot, the lead shot, and the water moves. In the yeah, it stuff. sloshes around, makes it very, very hard to balance, very hard to control. Make, it makes it a really tough event. Let's see how tough. Let's go to that barrel lift right now. Professional wrestler Jerry Blackwell from Nashville is staring at 200 pounds in the form of a barrel, and he doesn't like it already. Now, Jerry himself weighs a little over 400 pounds. Shape's kind of <laughs> like a barrel, but looks like he's having a little trouble with this one. It's really hard to handle this much weight in this fashion. You have to balance it. You've got to lift it overhead and control it at arm's length, but he's not even getting a start on it. Blackwell's out. Even Mr. Universe, Dave Johns, is struggling. Yeah, he's not using his legs uh, like he should. But he's so strong, he might get it. Pushing, getting close, but no, he can't Dave quite Johns it. bites the dust. Here's Cleve. Now, Cleve Dean could rip it open and drink it, but he's having a heck of a time pressing. Yeah, Cleve has a little. He's not used to this kind of thing at all. He's 6'7, which is yeah. hard, huh? At 250 pounds now, the big Scotchman Bill Anderson. He's a construction worker. He's used to handling unwieldy objects. 250 is a terrific amount for an untrained man, basically. At 250, here's Bob Young, who's handled some monsters on the line of scrimmage, but this is tougher than Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Bob did 225 easily, but getting up to this point, it's so hard to hold it with your hands. Bob's had his hands broken quite a few times. That may, let's see, maybe he can get it up. No. Young out at 250. John Cobb now. Look at his crouching style. What's this? Well, it's a technique. They use different techniques to get it up. As long as they can get it up some way, any way, just so that they get it over their head at arm's length. Terrible weight. It's almost as much as John weighs. 
And Joe Duby, the Gator from Florida, the former Olympic lifting champion. Yeah, he's lifted way over 400 over his head, and that shows you how hard this event really is. Almost held it long enough, but not quite. Now, last year's champion, Don Reinhout, in his winning lift was 270 pounds. And the group we've got going today look like they're going to go beyond that. Beyond that means 290 pounds and three are left. Don Reinhout, who you just saw win this event last year. And Billy Kazmaier, who's chalking up. He's now moved to California. This big bull is going to give it a shot before Lars Hedlund, the Swede, comes on. Here's Kaz. Kaz is so strong, it's just unbelievable. He has no technique. He has trouble getting his arms down, but he's so strong that he may just be able to press the weight overhead and hold it. Yes, sir. Look at that. Just unbelievable. Muscle. Unbelievable. Be hard to refuse that person anything. <laughs> Would you buy a used car from Billy Kazmaier? The big guy from upstate New York. Good concentration. Yeah, he's bearing down, using all the years of experience that he had as many times world powerlifting champion. He practiced this lift all year long. He has a big barrel at his home that he practices with. He has a real patterned, good way to do it. See, he steps forward with one foot. He there. takes his time, too, doesn't he? Yep, takes his time. Look at that. My goodness. 290. I believe he can do over 300 if he has to. Remember last year's record was 270 by this same man. Here's Lars Hedler. Lars and Bill are not going to let this be won cheaply. He was an Olympic lifter at one time and lifted 500 pounds over his head, so you get an idea of how tough this event really, really is. And he's vocal. Oh. No. Not quite? Nope. Not, he didn't hold it overhead and control it quite long enough to satisfy the judges. So he they have to try it again. He's got 90 seconds to do it in, so he still has quite a bit of time left. They stare at that uh, barrel like there might be a rattlesnake in a gunny sack, don't they? They look at it like it's an animated object. Yeah. Yeah. Good position? Yes, sir. He did it. Yes, sir. Load on 300. Let's see it. Kazmaier, Reinhout, and Lars Hedlund at 300 pounds. Look at this, breathing fire again. And all three finalists are over 300 pounds themselves, Terry, huh? Yep, got to take a big man to lift these truly big weights because you've got to balance, use your own body to balance against the great weight that's inside the barrel in lead shot and water. Kaz is struggling a little bit with this 300 pounds. I can understand it. Yeah. He almost pressed it again. That's just unbelievable. But I think he's holding it too long now. His arms and shoulders are starting to they'll start to deaden now. 300 pounds. Well, he's got about about 50 seconds left. But he spent a lot of energy. I don't know if he'll have enough left to give it another shot. We'll have to see. I'll tell you, if all the events like this, the nine coming up or anything like this, I'm really impressed. 45 seconds. Get on the records. Yes. No, he's going to let it go. Ryan out now is going to strap on that big belt. Now, what looks like it should have a 45 on the end of it. What are those belts for? <laughs> but Tom, the competitors, you've noticed other ones with those belts on. They wear them so that they get a little extra support in the back and in the waist when they handle these terrific weights. That one's pretty thick and a long way around. He's a big man. <laughs> yeah. Ryan out's never really lifted 300 pounds, but he must be picked up seeing Kaz fail, huh? Yeah, this gives him a chance to go into the lead now. He's never done this much, even in practice, but I think he's trained for it. No, he's losing his balance. No, sir, he didn't hold it up. He got close. it overhead, but he didn't balance it, but so close. No cigar, right? No, no cigar. He's got a little time, though. Boy, he's a patient man, though. He can really concentrate. Yeah. Got to have it this time. Got it in good shape now. Yeah. So, he, yep, he controlled it. The judges said he held it long enough, so it's a good lift. Now Lars Hedlund, the Swedish lieutenant. I'd go up any beach, he'd send me up. He scares you. Yeah, he's definitely all Sweden, I'm sure. <laughs> he holds the world record now in the bench press at about 614. So he has enormous strength in his chest and shoulders. Got it up, but nope, no, he didn't quite control it. He didn't quite hold it long enough. 
Jeez, it's so close. He'll let out a bellow this time. He'll sound like he's wounded. <laughs> he'll be wounded. If he doesn't lift it, he'll be tied for second with Kazmaier, and Brown will win it. A lot of breathing going on, getting ready. That's it. The winner of event number one, Don Reinhout, receives congratulations. Have you, ever, have you ever had a tougher competition with two grizzly bears than that, huh? I tell you, I was very, very lucky. And these, these fellows are just super. I can't say enough about the, the contestants today. I'm, I'm a lucky man to come out on top on this one today. Three of the largest ones around, though. The, the competition is getting tougher every year, isn't it? That's for sure, you know. And, uh, I just can't say enough. They're super athletes, and I'm just honored to, to come on, on the, the barrel lift so far. Don Reinhout, the winner, with Hedlund and Kazmaier close behind. I told you they were among the world's strongest men, didn't I? Next is going to become some steel bar bending. That'll be the next event. But first, uh, you and I have all blown up a balloon and had it bust. But a 50-year-old man named Bill Pearl is going to take one of the most expensive water bottles and blow it up. you got to have a set of lungs and... And we'll do that when we come right back. Back at the World's Strongest Men competition, you're looking at Bill Pearl blow up that hot water bottle. And as windy as I am, Terry, I couldn't even budge it. How long has Bill Pearl been around bodybuilding? <laughs> Bill's been around forever. It seemed he was first Mr. America in 1953. You might say he reached his prime he was 25. He's now unbelievably, he's 50 years old. Oh, boy, what a great endorsement for bodybuilding and weightlifting, yeah, huh? there's none better than Bill. Yeah. Oh, he's staying with it. Now everybody's beginning to hold their collective ears because that looks like a giant weather balloon there. Yeah, look at that thing. He's really having to bear down now. Every breath is an effort. Hot water bottle like your grandmama put in bed with you on those cold winter nights. Better get it quick. Looks like he's running out of gas and air above. Hello yes, there. Sir. All right, good work. Bill Pearl scores again. Steel bar bending. Uh, Terry, does this mean that perhaps the smaller, smaller athletes have a chance? Yeah, for sure, Tom. They really do because uh, this is completely a test of upper body strength. And so people like Dave Johns and John Cole will have a chance against the Goliaths that we have in the competition. Okay, we'll start, of course, with a three-foot bar that's a half-inch thick. Huh? Yeah, this is the bar that several people last year got started, but they couldn't bend it all the way. This year, I think this bar will be bent. That's the three-quarter, that are 11 sixteenths. 11 sixteenths. Is there any, any particular secret to getting it started? Yes, brute strength, power, and meanness. Terry, you have a way with words. Okay, the... Half-inch bar eliminated only one competitor. That was Jerry Blackwell, the wrestler. See right now at 916, it's Bill Anderson, the big Scotchman, Dave Johns, Mr. Universe, John Cobb, the big Pittsburgh Steeler, and Cleve Dean at 465. Here they go, working on 916 inches. Yeah, this is three and a half feet long. It's hot roll steel. Cobb has already touched up. And yeah, look at Cleve, upper left-hand corner. Turn it and use those great muscles from arm wrestling to pull that thing together. It's a new technique. You can bend it either on the top of your head or behind your neck. You can't put it across your knee. And you've got to pull the ends within eight inches of one another. Hey, Cleve Dean and John Cobb have measured and are sort of standing watching now. Cleve is still playing with it. Anderson and John struggling just a bit. Yeah, yeah, they're having a lot of trouble. It requires terrific upper body strength. Some of the events we'll have later in the show require leg and back and strength of various parts of the body. This is just an upper body test of strength. But the variety of the events is what I think measures really the world's strongest man. Boy, look at John. Got it moving a little bit now. Come on, Dave. Just a little more. Now he's trying to reverse it like Cleve Dean did. Now he goes back to a normal thing. It must be the most frustrating of all. Time is out. Dave Johns and Bill Anderson are eliminated. Okay, second heat. Five big ones here. Bob Young, Joe Duby. Look at this group. Kazmaier, Hedlund, and Rhinow. It's an average of about 335. Yes, sir. Big, big boys. Gee, they look at Don snapped his in. So did Lars. rhinow has been working probably all winter on this. Yeah, he practiced all year long on various side bars. Kazmaier got his. Kaz measured up. Bob Young looked like he got a good start, now it's stalled out on him, yeah. to the left. Yeah, Joe's got his 
even closer than Bob. Now he's reversing. Bob's reversing like Cleve. Harry got it going again. They still have a little more, though. They have 60 seconds to pull that, that, that bar together so that the ends are within eight inches. Bob Young is close. Come on, just a little more. Bear down, though. There's the buzzer. Eliminated now in the second heat, Bob Young and Joe Doobie. And now, Kazmaier, Headland, Reinhardt, Kolb, and Dean at 5 eighths. That's over a half inch. The bar now is a little longer. It's four feet long now. It gives them a little more leverage, but the bar is, of course, much thicker, so it's harder to bend. There is going to be a lot of scratching yeah, and groaning this time. Look at, look at Kolb. Kolb and Reinhardt have theirs almost shut. Unbelievable. Reinhardt's measuring up. See lower center there? Yeah. Lars has his. Now, yeah, Bill's having trouble. John He's Cole. trying to get his shoulders. Look, the great shoulder and chest power. Look at it come in there. Kazmaier on the left. Fantastic. They're wearing them like they're yeah. cravats. Kaz just grinned and yes, screeched at his. Look at this. Everyone did it. Fantastic. Now to 11 sixteenths. Think about that, folks. When you're six foot seven, 460 pounds, what do you like? Well, thank heavens, Cleve Dean's a good old boy. How big is your forearm? Well, like it is right now, about 18, but it'll probably go up 19 or better. If you're doing something with it, huh? Yeah. You're only 25 now, aren't you? 25 is right. And you know, this is the first time, Cleve, that you've been in this competition and you, you really didn't know what to expect. Uh, are you surprised that these guys are that good or, or that they're into this thing more than you are at this stage, you think? Well, I'm surprised and I'm not surprised because some of these guys here, if you look at them, you can tell they look like they can handle anything in the world. But you're going to go back to the farm. Now, you got a big pig farm down there. And I, now, your lady told me that one time a 600-pound sow was fooling around trying to get out and that you reached over and grabbed her by the ears and pulled it up, spanked her and stopped her and sent her back. Did you do that, really? Is that a true story? Uh, I've caught hogs that weigh 600 pounds in a dead run. And just stopped them? Yeah. That's pretty well, strong. Didn't exactly stop them dead still. We tumbled a little while, but we stopped. Yeah, come on, Bill. And these five competitors are going to tumble a lot over these bars of steel 11, 16 inches thick. And four of the five larger competitors in this event, John, too. look at the bend there. Cole Cole really got it started then. Now, he's got it farther than anyone now. Although Cleve also has a good bend, but John's his father. Cass Myers has got a good bend. Lars, number two uh, there on the right part of your screen, hasn't uh, done much at all no, yet. he's waiting. All yeah, over 300 pounds, but John Cole right in the center of your screen. Yeah, he's far smaller, far smaller than the other four men. Well, they're groaning and gnashing their teeth. It's wild. Absolute effort. They're trying to get it past the point where they can use the great muscles of their shoulders on it. Well, the people are really getting into this. They're really rooting. Well, he lost his towel, just bending it over his bare head now. The leader right in the middle. It looks like John Cole. Yeah, John's still in the lead. Learned how to hold, blocking those linemen on Sunday <laughs> afternoons. The winner looks to be John Cole and Cleve Dean pretty close. I guess it only figures that somebody from Pittsburgh would be the guy that could build a steel bars. But uh, congratulations, Thank John. Quite, a, quite an effort. Thank you very much. I'm just like Don Reinhold. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> about the fellow that you beat out by uh, uh, probably about an inch uh, unofficially right now, but uh, uh, you're giving 200 pounds away to uh, to big, uh, big Dean over there, who is 465 pounds, but this is his first competition. Pretty good job by him, huh? Sure was. Thank you. Thank you very much. The sucker here, the little he hit off, just bob him on the head and get rid of him now. <laughs> The statistics tell the story. The measurement with Cole McCourse winning, also getting 10 points for first place. And after the first week of competition, Reinhardt with a narrow lead over John Cole, then it's Kazmaier, Hedlund, and Dean rounding out the top five. Well, Dr. Todd, yeah, it's fun to call an analyst doctor. You know? <laughs> Dr. Todd, any big surprises today? Yes, to me, a big surprise that John Cole did as well as he did in the bar bend. I knew he would 
do well, but I didn't think that he'd be able to beat Kazmaier and Reinhardt, and I thought perhaps Dean would be ahead of him as well. Okay. It was a terrific performance. Next week, we got the caber toss. Anderson, the big Scott, might have a chance. Yeah, he has to be the favorite, although I think these other big men, if they get off a good throw, they may be able to beat him because the event is slightly different than the, the event that's done in Scotland. And the car lift, that is going to be incredible, isn't it? Yeah, no telling how much these guys can lift, maybe as much as 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pounds. Who is the world's strongest man? We still don't know yet, okay? Uh, we'll, we're, we're doing our best to find out, though. All right, let's go back to Dick Stockton after this word from your local station. Boy, they are strong, aren't they? And welcome back to the Universal Studios Tour Center here, where it's home base for our world's strongest men competition. We're in week number two. Week number one was a dizzy, but... This looks like the caber toss, a foreign thing, really, because it's modified from those Scottish Highland games. How about it, Doctor? Uh, this really is a, a log, but in Scotland they call it a caber. How and long? It's 14 feet long. How much? It weighs about 87 pounds, and the point is to pick it up in your hands, run with it, and make it turn over in the air. Okay. And these guys, I think, will throw it close to 40 feet. Advantage going to the big fellows, or somebody like Dave Johns at 235 have a chance? You have to pick the big guys, but the smaller, powerful, athletic guys like the two pro football players will also do very well, I think. Okay, how about as a stunt now? I understand that uh, uh, you're a lady that's very strong, one of the strongest in the world. She's going to do something at halftime, Orlin? Yeah, Jan is going to, as their, our stunt today, she's going to try to drive a nail through a board just using her hand. No My hammer. Gosh. Okay, a caber toss, uh, a nail driving job by, by Mrs. Side, and then also the car lift, which is going to be some kind of a day. The leader after week number one, Ryan out, John Cole the second place, Billy Kazmaier close behind. Ready for that foreign-looking caber toss, so... Let's get on with the action. Bill Anderson, uh, the big fellow from Scotland, is going to show us in this preliminary toss. Explain the rules, Terry, of the caber toss. Well, basically, they have to pick the caber up. They have to run with it or walk with it. They can't go past the red line. They have to first, of course, get the thing balanced. You'll notice that Bill picks it up himself all the way from the floor, which is the way it's done in Scotland. There they throw for accuracy, straightness, rather than distance. Here we're going for distance. Momentum is a key yeah, thing. The red is the foul line. line, right? The foul line, and then we measure all the way to the end of the caber. Must get the, farther, the flip over. Yeah, huh? The farthest point where it lands, so making it flip is important. Of course, the finalist, the five, will come from this group. This is Jerry Blackwell, a professional wrestler who packs 420 pounds on a 510 frame. Yeah, he didn't quite get up enough speed and enough power to make the caber turn, so the throw was very short. This doesn't look so darn easy to me. Here's Dave Johns, Mr. Universe. Look at the size of that bicep. Or is yeah. that a tricep? <laughs> That's both. Dave's about 235. He's lighter. It's more difficult for a person this size. He's got to run and develop a lot of explosive power to make the thing turn in the air. No, he didn't quite throw it with enough power to make it turn, and so the throw will be short. Hey, those big kids that are helping the assistants weigh about 220 pounds, and next to Joe Doobie, of course, the Olympic lifter, he weighs 345. They look smart. Yeah. got it over. Yeah, Joe has the great power that a world champion in Olympic lifting would have. It's a good throw. How about a big offensive lineman like Bob well, Young now? Bob Young's going to have to do well. He's all pro guard. He's got a great deal of explosive power. He's famous for that in the game. He's blocked guys about as tall as that pole, too. Here it goes. Yeah. Bob Young. Oh, yeah, look at that throw. My goodness. Terrific throw. He's a deceptively strong athlete, isn't he? Speaking of size, of course, uh, the leader after... Week number one was Big Don Reinhout. Now, what is he going, 340 pounds? Or Don's about 340. World record holder in powerlifting. He's having a little trouble with the balance here. This event may be a bit of trouble. It's hard to tell. He's so big and so powerful, though, that he may be able to just throw it just with main strength. Yeah, there it goes. Brute strength. And a lot of it. Billy Kazmaier, when he looks you in the eye, it's like looking inside <laughs> your soul. What an athlete he is. Yes. Former fullback, he used to run it like a 10 flat hundred, so this guy can do a lot of things. Terrific power. 330 pounds. It's a fine throw. This big fella couldn't get gloves big enough for Cleve Dean, the big pig farmer from down in Georgia. Is he a monster? Yeah, best arm wrestler and wrist wrestler in the world. He makes that thing look little. He could stir his grits with that thing. Looks like a toothpick to him. 466 But pounds. he has a little, no, he's, he leaned back. He Instead, you have to lean forward and thrust the thing forward. Here's the Pittsburgh Steeler offensive lineman. Now, John Cole, he's a great athlete. Look at that. Yeah, a great throw. John has the kind of power that you take that it takes in this event. 
The Swedish Army Lieutenant Lars Hedlund. What about him, Terry? Yeah, Lars not in the Army. He is the Army. That's a fine throw. The five finalists and their qualifying distances. Bill Anderson, 33 feet, 5 inches. John Kolb, 35, 1 and a half inches. Big Bob Young, 36, 5 and a half inches. Look out, Billy Kazmaier, 36, 9 and a half. And Lars Hedlund with the best toss in preliminaries, 37, 5 and a half inches. Now to the finals for the best of two. Now, does Anderson really have an advantage in this last round, Terry? Uh, well, in a way, he may have a disadvantage because he practices to throw the thing straight rather than for distance. And that may work against him because he learned one technique and he has to kind of relearn another one here. Pretty casual. Still got his watch yeah. on. Now, you measure from the feet, right, to the end of the board? That's right. From the end of the toe, the father's toe, to where the farthest end of the pole lands on the ground. Not the bounce. That's right. Not the bounce. Very important. Let's see the finals now of the caber toss. 34-7. He improved on his preliminaries best toss. Bob Young, he's beefed up uh, from football. I don't think he weighs that much when he plays offensive well, guard. close to that. He usually plays about 275. Right. He's now about 285. 285. Yeah. He's That's pretty casual, too. He's still got the shades on. <laughs> yeah. Bob is uh, going <laughs> to handle this well, I think. He's uh, very, very explosive. Well, he, but he stepped forward. That's going to cost him a foot or so. You're absolutely right. Let's see what the measurement is. It did cost Bob Young 34-9. That's not nearly as good as his best in the preliminary. On, Lars. Lars Hedlund. By now, he's psyched up. He walks around, talks to people in the gallery, gets under the umbrella, comes back out. Yeah, he did well last year in these events. He wants to do even better this year. Now, it's a good throw. I think that may put him in first place. Let's see. 35, just over 35 feet with Bill Kazmaier and John Kolb left. There's Kazmaier. Breathing fire. Yep, he needs to go over 35 feet to go into first place here. Here's a dedicated guy, though. He works, what, four or five hours a day? Just yeah, yeah, he's, he's training really hard. He's pulled his weight up about 50 pounds this last year. He's backing down right now. He's got to get it going the right direction. That's a fine throw. Even though he stepped forward, it cost him a foot, but I think that was, I think that's well ahead of the best throw so far. 36, six and a half inches. That's the leader by far. So John Kolb now, the Pittsburgh Steelers, back down between the rock and the hard place. I guess good athletes like that, though. He's just got to flat lay out the best throw, doesn't he? Sure, he, he's the kind of guy that will respond to pressure. He likes it this way. Such a fine athlete, he's learned this event well. Good balance? Yeah, very little practice, but you can see he already really has control of this thing. Kolb's last toss. Take great height on it. Looks yes, good. sir. Does look good. Looks like a fine throw. Let's wait for the official length on that one. If there were no scratches, that could be the winner. 36, eight and a quarter inches, and Kolb saved the best for last. John, congratulations. You win another one. And again, as a football player, you're you're in with a big fella. You can't beat him with a bigger guy than this, right, with Kaz? with the stick, and that's huh? what we had. <laughs> what about the new event? Was this sort of fun to do something that's strange? Yeah, like you know, I think that's what makes the whole thing fun. I mean, you don't go around throwing telephone poles every day or, or lifting beer kegs or bending bars. It's something different. It makes it fun. And the numbers tell the story. John Cole picks up 10 points and $500. Kaz Meyer second, Lars Hedlund third. And the new leader in the clubhouse after three events is John Cole. Analyst Terry Todd's wife, Jan, a very fine power lifter her own right, has a stunt, but I think it's a pretty legitimate hack. Okay. What I'm going to do here, Tom, is I'm going to drive this nail, which is a common carpenter's nail, through this board using just my hands. Get out. Without a hammer? Just with your hands? Without a hammer. It's a little bit dangerous. The mm -hmm. danger, of course, is that rather than going on through, it'll come back and go through my palm. Okay. So people should not try this at home, but we want to see the stunt. But let's have a commercial break first, all right? All right. You and Terry must have a ball at parties, man. <laughs> Back at the World's Strongest Men, it's time for a stunt by one of the world's strongest women, and it's your wife, Terry. Yeah, Jan has to drive this straight. She has to hit it straight and very, very fast. A little bandana there. What's the bandana for, Terry? Well, to pat her hand, of course. And she told me before she did this, she'd try something she'd never tried before. If she drove it straight, she was going to see if she could pull it out with her teeth. Also, not recommended. Yep. Yeah. Do not try this. Leave this for the experts. And Jan is. 
Well, obviously, around the Todd household, Jan does a lot of the heavy work, right? Yes, I, I do nothing around the groceries, furniture, stuff like that. She handles it. You don't do windows or anything, do you? <laughs> no, nor carpentry. All right, let's talk a little bit. Caber toss, uh, John Kolb sneaked in there. The Pittsburgh offensive lineman scored big, but how about lifting cars? That's going to be different. Yeah, it's going to be right? hard for John because of his smaller size. Don Reinhout won this event last year. The previous year, Lou Ferrigno, the Hulk, won it. The big men will have the chance in this. Well, you know, Terry, this amazes me now. We're probably talking about a deadlift weight of somewhere in the 800, 900 pound range. Yeah, I think they're going to have to go certainly over 800, probably over 900, and maybe to 1,000 in this event. We pick up the action after three lifts, and seven competitors have been eliminated. 1,732 pounds was passed, 2,202 pounds, and then 2,440. And now the remaining competitors, Don Reinhout, whom you see right here, Big Bob Young, and Billy Kazmaier. And that's Reinhout. He's packed into that blue uniform at 345. Yes, he's wonderful in this lift. He holds a world record in the deadlift. And this is very much like a deadlift, although it's a little bit higher off the ground. You can see the bar there that he has to grab. Now, the car weighs 2,500 pounds, yep. and he'll be deadlifting what? 900 pounds at the hands is the weight at the hands. Oh. See, he'll reverse his hand, one hand under, the other hand over. He uses chalk there to help his grip. Concentration and sight, yep. huh? He won this a year ago at the World's Strongest Men competition. Reinhardt. He really needs this one. Oh, strong play. Great play. And roared like a bull. First test pass by Ryan Alda, and now Bob Young. Gosh, he looks funny in that brown uniform. I'm used to red and white. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't get to lift weights very much every year, but the time that he does spend is well spent because he, uh, the fact that he's in there with these men at all is unbelievable. He gives up 60 pounds to Ryan Hout, and yet he's still in the competition with him. No, just a little too much for Bob. A just hot a afternoon, and Bob Young now, the worst he can settle for is third. And here's Billy Kazmaier, the heir apparent to really the super heavyweights lifting in this country, huh? Yes. If anyone breaks Roundhouse's record, he'll be the one to do it. What a moose. Spirits of ammonia, he just cleared his head a little bit. Boy, cleared it easily. And looked at the car like he hated it. Now it's head-to-head. -head. Don Reinhout against Billy Kazmaier. Reinhout is just a big, lovable guy. I asked him if he could be a big, lovable guy and still a tough competitor. Well, I, I think there's a fine line there. I think, you know, to be a good competitor, you know, uh, it, it's what's inside you. You know, I, I enjoy people, and I enjoy uh, trying to set a good example for people, and I, you know, I... Uh, uh, you do that, too. Well, I try, really. Cynthia yells things to you, and I know she's a psychiatrist and a very bright lady. You really listen for her voice, don't you? Yeah, she's, she's uh, been my coach for, for years and years, and... Uh, She's got a tremendous uh, background and knowledge, and I, of course, I respect her for that, and she helps me an awful lot. We pick up the action now. Both have lifted 2,225 pounds, or 925 deadlift. 2,550, or 950 deadlift. Terry, what's he thinking? Yeah, he, he knows that this is right near his limit. He has the lubrication, some sort of lubrication on his thighs so that the bar will slide up. He's really trying to concentrate and focus all of his energy and strength on this one great effort. Remember, this big family man is 34 years of age, and it's hot, boy. It's hot out here. Yeah. Starting to go. I think he's got it. Yep. Yes, sir. He pulled it. He's sure. What an Unbelievable. effort. Uh-oh, he's, he's watching. That is a maximum effort, isn't it? Yeah. It uses everything in the body. Yeah, he's huh? hyperventilated. He almost passed out. Comes Kazmaier again. That's spirits of ammonia, the inhaler there. It's done in international competition, and all amateur sports allow the use of ammonia. Clear the head and focus the attention. He looks through that car like he'd like to burn it up. Now Look at this. He's going to bear down, turn into an animal to lift this weight. Got to have it. Uh oh. Stand back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got it. Kazmaier easily muscled that. And now Don Reinhardt, I believe, is signaling he may not lift again. Just decided to let, let the young guy try well, to lift this thing. I'm getting awful old for these things. I don't know. <laughs> he is 25. Yeah, he's a little bit younger, a little more, uh, a little more, you know, energy, I think, than I have. I, although I, I gave it the best shot I thought I did. but Biggest lift you've ever had, Don? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think last year it came to around 8, 10 that we did over here. And uh, so, you know, quite a little bit of improvement. Add five pounds. Billy Kazmaier now can be the outright winner. If he doesn't, if he fails, he'll be a tie with Ryan Alpha. He's going to attack it. After a long time, it's good. Billy Kazmaier is the winner. 
They tell me one of the most remarkable things about you is that you went from like a 275 pounder to like 330 in what, a year? And you, you didn't do it with just bulk, you did it with muscle, didn't you? Well, I'm trying to pack it on, yeah. Trying to make it in the super heavyweight class of powerlifting. I've got to have the weight. Did you learn a lot from the big fella, Don, the way he's... He's a hero. Huh? He's a legend, yeah. It's something to catch him, it's though, It's fun huh? to compete with him. Quite a guy that just won the car lift. Kazmaier getting 10 points. Reinhardt second place, 7. Bob Young with 4. And after two weeks and four events, Billy Kazmaier is now the leader. John Cobb trails very closely. And we have six events in three weeks left. It's a perfect day here in Southern California. We're at the Universal Studios Tour Center where we're ready for week number three of the World's Strongest Men competition. Right now, we're looking at, uh, I think, 750 pounds of a lot of competition in the wheelbarrow race. What about it, Terry? Yeah, it's a brutal event. It's uphill. It's a very, very tough event. Hard on the thighs? Yeah, the thighs will blow up an inch or so just from the effort of pushing it up uh, a 10-degree grade. Okay, now, after the wheelbarrow race, we go to a stunt, and that Larry Pacifico is one of the all-time powerlifters, isn't he? Yeah, eight-time world champion powerlifting. He's going to try to withstand the pull of 10 people. We're going to get them right out of the stands, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the next event is the one I like the best. Yeah, the girl lift. Well, a couple of bunnies come in from L.A., and they're going to lift them, and that may be yeah. one of the total big couple, lifts, huh? two, three, four, five, maybe even six girls. All right, you say this is 750 pounds, huh? Yep, 750. All right, you're 200 and how much? 280. All right, 280, and you've got three young stallions there at 200 plus. Still hasn't moved. I'm a little over 200 pounds, so it looks to me like it's going to be a load. And after two weeks, Billy Kazmaier is leading John Cobb with right out Hedlund and Dean, still very much in striking distance. We're about ready for event number five in the World's Strongest Men competition. We're going to have Dave Johns, Mr. Universe, who's only about 225 pounds, against Big Bill Anderson. Here you see the big Scott getting ready to go. Yeah, he's outweighed quite a lot by Anderson. I think Anderson should be favored in this. He's a very strong, natural working man. He works construction work yep. in Scotland now. Here yep. we go. Boy, that looks tough. Yeah, that's, that thing started. That's 100 feet up. It's about a 10-degree grade. Yeah, he's got a good lead on Dave. Keep, oh. No, he pulled up. What happened? He might have hurt himself. Yeah, now Dave is moving into the lead. Yeah, I think, on the legs, I right think Anderson hurt himself somewhere in the leg, but he's, he won't he's game. No, he's tough. He's going on through it. John's have a little trouble with control, no. but he's, oh, he's, like he's going to win. tough at the top. Look at that. Yeah, he... No, he's hurt. Anderson is hurt. <laughs> Dave, I know you're breathing hard, my friend, but uh, how about it? What kind of a 100 feet was that coming up? I tell you, coming up that hill <laughs> is really rough. I find that... Uh, you really have to, uh, main thing is having control of the wheelbarrow. It's not so much the strength, it's control. And, uh... You said you had to keep it hot, you thought. Did you keep it hot? Because you really finished very strongly. Right. Well, I didn't pick up my momentum until I got halfway up the hill, almost finished. How do your legs feel? Oh, they feel fine. They're big enough, but are they feeling all right now? Oh, they're good. All right, good really luck. pumped now. Good going. Hey, Johns is really put together. Here's his time to beat, 18.63 for Johns, and... Bill Anderson, the big Scott, was hurt and will not be in the competition anymore. There's, of course, Cleve Dean now against Lars Hedlund in heat number two. What about these two? Well, Cleve, of course, is almost as big as that wheelbarrow at 460 pounds. Wow. Lars is a terrific athlete, does a lot of running as an officer in Sweden. Well, he's got a good start. Yeah, he's a, taking yeah. small steps. Yes, he like. is, but he's way ahead. Big lead. You've got to keep it straight. You don't want the thing to waver. He should have it a little higher, perhaps. But he's still, he's doing really terrific. He's staying right on the great, line. Great, great, great Yelling all the way. Let's check him Come out. On, Cleve. Cleve's going to finish. It's 100 feet. <laughs> Lars, 14 flat. Wilhelm did it once in 12-3, but might not have been on a day like today, huh? No, I don't think so. It's rather hot now. And I think it's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> I did it wrong today. You, you want to go down the hill that way instead of coming up? Yep, okay. that's the right way. Lieutenant Hedlund's winning time was 14.10. Dean's time was 19.64. This heat, Big Bob Young and the Cardinals against John Cobb. Let's see how tough the Steeler really is. You've got, what, three Super Bowl rings? Three Super Bowl rings. Where are they, in the safety deposit box? Where the heck are they? I don't well, see you know, the, the airlines limit the weight that you can travel <laughs> on these airplanes, and uh, my yeah. wife likes to bring a lot of clothes. Now, if I bring three Super Bowl <laughs> rings, and she can't bring any clothes, so we had to make a decision. You know, it's really fun. You came out last year and did very well. A tougher field, I think, this year in the World's Strongest Men. But you really enjoy the ding, getting together with these guys and, and really pitting your strength and your athletic ability against their power and everything, don't you? Yeah, I'm like Don. Don Reinhardt keeps saying, I'm just happy to be here. And uh, being an offensive lineman, I'm just happy to be anywhere. You know? <laughs> so, so uh, and it's fun. You know, these are not the things that you normally do. And it's, it's fun 
to do something that is for change. And when you play ball, you're expected to perform at a certain level. But when you do this, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen when, you, when you're balancing that uh, caber or, or pushing the, the beer kegs, and, and uh, it makes it fun. Cove against on, Bob Young, and they get a good start, and these two guys should have good driving legs. No question about it. This is two of the strongest offensive linemen in the game, maybe the two strongest. Bob is a little heavier. Yeah, he's got a good lead on Cole. He's nope. going, what, 285? Yeah, 285. Cole about 260. Two good times there. Let's check it out. Replay, you can see that the strong finish by Cole didn't overtake Bob Young. We're going to grab Young right now. All right, you are 14.3, somewhere in that, uh, we haven't got the official time on it yet. You really did just get by him, but that was really a, a good race. You guys both performed pretty well, don't you think? <laughs> very well. Uh, John's a very good athlete, great competitor. Bob Young's time was 13.69, Kolb's 14.30. Remember, they are racing the clock while they're racing one another in these two-man heats. And look at this, Kaz Meyer against Don Reinhardt. These are the bulls. Yeah, these two big men should perhaps lower the best time so far. They're both tall, strong, heavy. Boy, those wraps around the elbow look, look at, like oh, look down at Kaz Meyer go. He, he did a 4.740 in college. Uh, he's just running with the thing. Unbelievable. Oh, he almost... Almost went over the line, but still he's going to be way ahead. And Reinhardt's done this before. 12.25, you were the leader coming in, so now you looks like you might pick up the 10 big ones on this, huh? Yeah. You know, you only won by like a quarter of a second. That Don was right off your, your left tire. Yeah, I started turning there. Yeah? It's tough coming in. Have you practiced this before, or was this the first shot? That's pretty much my first time with something that heavy. Pretty much the first time. Pretty good time. 12.25, the leader. And, of course, the big fella, Reinhardt's at 12.99. We'll get our final competitor in this. This is Joe Doobie from Florida. And Jerry Blackwell, by the way, the professional wrestler, is out of the competition due to that injury, Terry. So Doobie's going to go alone and be a little tougher by This himself. will definitely make it harder for Joe. He's a great, powerful athlete himself. He's not trained quite as hard lately as these other men, but still he's, he's doing very well. He's moving the thing. 100 feet up the hill at 750 pounds. It's a heck of a race. Is it legs more than anything Legs, else? hips, lower back, arms, everything. Luby at 16.48, not really in the chase. And you can see the wheelbarrow results. Billy Kazmaier, Reinhardt Young, Hedlund, and John Cole. The standings, we're only halfway through week number three. Eight times in a row, Larry Pacifico has won the World Powerlifting Championship. And the man from Dayton, Ohio today is going to show us a, a stunt. And I think it's quite a feat. What are you going to do? Well, Tom, I'm going to put a rope on each one of my arms. I'm going to have five people on each side try to break my grip by me holding onto a smaller rope and uh, see if I can't hold them. We're going to get five people from the audience, huh? That's right. On each arm. That's right. Okay, right after this message, we'll be back with Larry Pacifico. I think he's going to do it. We're well, back with the world's strongest men competition, and Larry Pacifico certainly is that with this stunt, right? No question. At his body weight, he's probably the strongest man in the world. Five big guys on each yeah. arm couldn't pull it apart. No, sir. How much Ten men. Do you think? Well, each team would weigh about between 900 and 1,000 pounds, and they were pulling as hard as they could. They had a good surface to pull against. It's a slightly dangerous event, but the great power of his upper body, his shoulders, his arms, his chest, he could hold them back. From Dayton, Ohio, that's where they're going to have the, the World Lifting Championships. Yeah, the World Power Lifting Championships. He's going for his ninth World Championship. Pacifico gets his done and does his job. He is strong. Yes, sir. Very powerful, man. This is called the girl lift, and while it's gorgeous and the bunnies from the Los Angeles Playboy Club are upstairs, a lot of work going to go on down under here. So we'll go to my expert analyst, my doctor of power, and uh, Terry, it's a fancy-looking lift, but it's a tough lift, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost enough to make me want to come out of retirement, I'll tell you. <laughs> this one could do it, right? Yes, if anything could, that would do it. Okay, what about uh, Kazmaier, of course, leads? Uh, we've already seen him go for a word, world record last week, uh, lifting the automobile. Uh, uh, is he just going to stomp right through this thing? No, I don't think so. I think Reinhardt would have to be the favorite in this. He won it last year with 790 pounds, but I do think he's going to need more than that to win this year, but I think he can do more this year. Maximum effort. Do you think that you bunnies from the Los Angeles Playboy Club are going to be able to get a maximum effort down here from these guys? Yeah. What about it, folks? All right. All right. Let's lift away on the girl lift, okay? Let's get with it. The crowd is whooping it up. We've gone past 463, 607, 723, 773. And Hedlund, Young, Reinhardt, and Kazmaier are still in the chase at 847, Terry. Yeah, Lars will be up now. He's got, you see, he's putting chalk on his hands. He's got chalk all across the top of his shoulders so the bar won't slip. Does the muscular development in any way prohibit you being good at this, Elliot? 
Well, of course, this lift primarily tests the hips and the thighs. And Lars is very good at this. He's done 800, a little over 800 pounds. Well, he's but got this is, eight, cars, this is 847. He's got to go down almost into a full squat. And he'll hit a pin and then push back up. He's got to... Nope. Nope. A little Didn't too heavy. Quite, huh? Nope. Too much weight for Lars. It's a terrific amount of weight. Big Bob Young, he's got his knees all strapped up like he's getting ready to play the Cowboys. Yeah, What's he's that a, about? He's a lot smaller than the other men. He's got those knees taped up to help prevent injury and give him a little support at the bottom. He's terrifically strong in this event. Look at that, right back up. Terrific, terrific 47 for Bob Young. And now Don Rhino. Now Don won this event last year. And he holds the world record in the squat with 935 pounds. And he works in his own garage oh, up yeah. in upstate New York listen, all winter. Listen, he trained like a bear all winter long. <laughs> He's built like he a bear. Was, he was not hibernating. He was doing full squats and bench presses and hitting it. He should move this weight with no trouble at all. This to him is a lightweight. I can hear Cynthia yelling at him. Yes, oh, look at that. See? Piece of cake. His wife always is his coach, vocally, too. There he is. The big fellow strides out. Piece of cake. Here comes a Clydesdale. Billy Kazmaier at 847. <sighs> Listen to some of the yeah, chatter, he's huh? He's in the lead and he wants to stay there, but he knows he's against a terrific oh. man in this particular country. Oh, he's growling at us. He's convinced Stand me. back there. Yeah, you got it. Like a rock. Big Bob now is being assisted by his brother, who's a heck of a lifter. Yeah. Go to 917. Now this this weight is uh, only two or three men in history have ever squatted with this much weight, and Bob only weighs 280 85 pounds. This is just unbelievable. What he's even trying. Un I cannot ah, imagine he lifted that thing. That's just remarkable. Yeah. Bob Young says that weightlifting made him an all pro football player. Eight, nine years, I was just a very average guard. I started weightlifting, and each, each year I got better. I should have made All-Pro about the last three or four years, but we had Dobler over there and Deardorff and Banks. It's hard to get four guys All-Pro in one team. And uh, finally last year I made it, but it's just because of uh, hanging there working and uh, the weightlifting. Same old story. The shortcut to success is hard work. This guy's done a lot of it, Don Reinout. Now Don has got 917 here on the bar. He's done this many times in his gym at home. Don weighs almost 350 pounds. Do these guys fall in love with their apparatus and their weightlifting gear? <laughs> Must be part of their life, huh? Well, they sure spend a lot of time with it. <laughs> a lot of barbell widows in the world. 917. This yeah, is no laughing matter, huh? He takes off. Look, see the great weight on top of him. Look at that. Oh, yes, absolutely no problem. Of course, he's a gigantic person yeah, physically, all, isn't he? Yeah, he really is, 6'3 and a half, 350. Now the pressure goes to Billy Kazmaier. Yep, Kazmaier has never done this much in competition. He's only actually been lifting for about two and a half years. He's the most remarkable potential of any athlete I've ever seen in the sport. Football coaches still cry because oh. at that time he was a fullback, and now he's yeah. a 320-some-odd pound lifter. Nine seventeen. Now let's see if he can get it. No sir. Rude. That small waist. He just has no support at the bottom like the other big men have. You Try it what? again. One more. Maybe. No. 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 It's too much. Don Reinout and of course Bob Young are still in it. A thousand pounds is coming up. For this girl lift on the world's strongest men competition here on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Back on the world's strongest men competition, Tom Brookshire and Terry Todd, and you're looking at the knees of Bob Young being wrapped. It's Don Ryan out and Bob Young still in. They're going to lift half a ton in the girl lift. That's gonna, a lot. I guess it is. They're going to try it. This is well over the world record in the squat and powerlifting. This is a slightly different event, but still a thousand pounds. No matter how you cut it, it's just a remarkable, amazing amount of weight to try to lift with the now hips sort and of the legs. A, Young sort of attacks it, doesn't he? He walks in yeah, like he's bullying. Yeah, but this is so much weight. Man. No, he started it, but it's just too much. I think he's uh, he realizes he's going to have to stand back and see if the big man from New York can do it. Let's sit with Bob Young and watch Don Reinhardt try for the thousand pounds. 
Bob, you sort of, you and your brother, I think, decided to use a little strategy and go for the 1,000, and uh, almost an impossible lift, but now at least you can split maybe first place points, huh? Well, Don possibly could miss it. He'll probably make it, but he could miss it. Now, here the big fellows go, and we'll sort of watch it together. You folks remember now that Reinhardt is really trying something monumental, a 1,000 pounds. Listen to the chatter now. What is he concentrating? Thousand pounds. Beautiful girls above him. He doesn't know any of that right now. He just thinking position and execution. A lot more cerebral than you think, isn't it, folks? He's ready now. Got it. <laughs> you all right? I, I don't want you to black out, my friend. <laughs> I'm sitting over there with Bob Young, who said he thought you would make it. That's an incredible feat. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Huh? Thank you. How about that beautiful load you had oh, above a thousand my. pounds and all, though, huh? Can I keep him now that I lifted him? <laughs> is, it, is it the best lift you've ever had, do you think? Uh, yes, sir. That's the best I've huh? ever done. I'm really honored. That's, you know, well, it's just honored to be here. And I'm, You're I'm never going to get old. You know what? You're getting younger every oh, day. Oh, gosh. I, thank you. We keep trying anyway. How about this, the champion? Now, huh? that was a tough one, a thousand. Thank you. Don Reinhardt coming on strong in the girl lift. You can see he picked up 10 points. Young and Kazmaier close behind. And now Reinhardt's moved past Kolb into second place, and Kazmaier still leads. All right, Terry, try to keep our look forward. We're, we had the, the girl lift, which I think is one of the best events I've seen in any sport. But uh, what about the big move by, by Young? Was that an incredible thing? But you thought it might happen anyway. Yes, I've known him for a long, long time, and he's, to me, the strongest natural man I ever saw. I knew he'd do well in this, but I had no idea he'd come as close to roundhouse as he did. Now, Billy Kazmaier looked like he was going to run away with everything after week two, but suddenly that big lead's now shrunk to five and a half over Don. Huh? Yeah, Don's going to make a fight out of it. If Kazmaier wins, he's going to have to he's going to have to really bear down from now on. Okay, how about next week now? What about those two events? Uh, who would have the advantage, do you think, let's say, in the tram pull? Well, in the tram pull, I think I'd have to go with Kazmaier and Reinhardt, although the big men, Cleve Dean, he might do well. In the hoist lift, the smaller men have a chance, people like Dave Johns, because that's a test of upper body strength, hands, arms, and shoulders. Okay, you've always told me you strength people have a very tough life, but after looking at the bunnies from Los Angeles, I'm not so sure. Girls, you did a great job, all right? We're here at the World's Strongest Men competition where we're going after week number four. And, of course, now Kazmaier has a five-and-a-half point lead over Don Rideout. And the two football players, John Kolb and uh, also Big Bob Young, are in the top four. And then Lars, the big Swede, is in there number five. But uh, what about the lead? And is Kazmaier going to hang on to it with this event right here? Kazmaier's arms are hurting him just a bit now. Right. But he's very strong in this sort of thing, and he ought to be very hard to beat. Although Roundhouse is also powerful. But there are two or three other guys that also have a chance, I think, Cleve Dean being one of them. All right, what about this event now? This is a hoist, a uh, fairly simple pulley on, yeah, on just, just the washing machine. Yeah, it's huh? just like hauling in a heavy anchor on a boat. How Muscles heavy? of your, well, it's going to be over 300 pounds before they get to a winter, maybe even 400. Okay. And it tests the arms, the hands, and the shoulders. The old washing machine hoist. And this looks like a tough event, Terry. Yeah, this is a hard event. It's uh, an event where body weight is not as big as an advantage as it is in the other events. The hand strength again? Is this yeah. upper upper body? Yeah, mostly upper body. Hand strength, forearm strength back strength and calluses on the hands <laughs> it looks like it's going to be tough on that rope yeah dave johns is a bodybuilder he weighs about 235 pounds and i think he ought to be given a medal for bravery to just be here against these giants because he's facing cleve dean a big farmer from south georgia who weighs 460. cleve gets it i think it looks like his oh, yeah. uh, school desk back in that little school room <laughs> in georgia no problem Ooh. he gets it to the top so does johns very good job for both men Two competitors are now out due to injuries. That's, of course, Anderson, the big Scott, and Blackwell, a professional wrestler. Here's Joe Duby on the left from Florida. He was world Olympic lifting champion in 1969. He's going against John Cole, the Pittsburgh Steeler offensive lineman. See, they have to, they're held down by the brace of, on, the, on the top of their thighs, and they have to pull this weight, which is now 290 pounds, all the way up until it hits the top. And, Hopefully locks in and somehow the apparatus doesn't work and the helpers grab it they so that the do men that, don't get hurt. Oh, do yeah. that within 30 seconds, too. There is That's a clock right. factor. Yeah. They're really not 
going against one another. They're going against the clock, and they're going against the weight of the apparatus. We'll increase it as we get higher. That's Billy Kazmaier on the left at 300, what, 15 pounds? Yeah, 315 pounds. He's a strength coach at Auburn University. Lars Hedlund is a powerlifting champion of Europe and a lieutenant in the Swedish Army. Right, okay, also lieutenant. Also about 310. Both men should be able to pull this one. Yep, Lars. Oops. Uh oh, apparatus problem. Touch was made. Yeah, he got it. So did Bill. Nobody eliminated yet. This is the hoist. That's Bob Young, the 280-pound offensive lineman, and Don Reinhout to the right. Yeah, Don Reinhout, the powerlifting champion. And now Bob has gloves on, but apparently he can't. You can see he can't hold it. The gloves just don't have as good a gripping surface as your hands would. Well, now he's had some hand trouble anyway oh, due yeah. to the injury. Now. Broken many times his hands. He's always had problems with his hands. And that's uh, really a, well, he's going to be given another chance. That's Dave Kagey, and of course, Jack Curran is the Lakers trainer, the trainer for our world's strongest man. See how much better he's doing it now. He's able to, he's having pain though. But no, didn't no, quite get it up there. Not quite up, not quite up. Now the weight goes up to 350. You've got to use the back on this too. Oh yeah, you can like see the men laying back on it. You have to hold, you have to have the hands to hold it and then you have to actually pull it. It's too much to pull just with your arms. You have to use your whole body, at least as much of your body as the apparatus allows you to use. Doobie on the left and John Kolb on the right. Kolb is a darn good competitor. Oh, Kolb's got some of the strongest hands in the world. He's just amazing. You can see Joe is having problems with Big John. Got it to the top, yep. Touched up. Amazing athlete for small at 260 around here. Yeah, against these giants. There's two men over 300 pounds, very well built. Neither one even have a 40-inch waist. <laughs> Wish I could say that. Okay, Kazmaier on the left. And big Lars Hedlund. You can see Bill is, Bill's hands are so thick, there's not much room for the rope once he closes them. He needs more. He wants more stick, I heard him say. Muscles in his fingers, too, huh? Yeah. See the hands? See how <laughs> thick they are? The size of that. He doesn't have as much gripping surface as the other men do. No, you can see it sliding through the his clock hands. is still moving. Oh, oh, there it is. Couldn't do it. Kazmaier is out. Going to be a problem for him in points. Reinhardt never seems to be out. No. Couldn't get it? No, he almost got it. But he couldn't quite. He missed it. Cleve passed on 350 pounds. Didn't even try it. He said, no, he wanted to wait. Give him 370. He had done something like 400 back down on the pig farm this way, but it's on a different apparatus. No, he's having trouble. It's not hand trouble for him. Is it? Well, the wrist oh, wrestling champion yeah. of the world. That's true. Gee, look at that. Not quite. He's not going to be able to do it. It was a bad gamble on his part. That's the reason the varied events really do give you a severe yeah, test of no who question. is the strongest man they, overall. They test pretty well every muscle in the entire body. Here's Colvin. Here's a guy that really knows how to compete. He finds out the best way he can do it and seems to operate there. Yeah, John has a perfectly built hands for this event because his hands are very long, broad, and flat. They're not fleshy at all, and so he has a lot of grip surface to put onto that rope. The perfect hands. Here we perfect go. Perfect hands for an offensive lineman. <laughs> Look at him now. This guy in the line of scrimmage can tear your shirt off. Yeah, the man is <laughs> hes double tough. I think he's got a shot at this one. He's been a dark horse competitor already. Yes, now he's doing well yes, in this. Oh, oh, this he is takes it right. Just a couple more pulls. He, he got, got it. it. Yes, sir. Terrific. Okay. Whew. Last 10 feet was really something, wasn't it? It was something to start, but it's not over with. Lars has a shot. So yeah, Lars going to give it a shot. Is the grip good? Uh, the hands, are, is that the big problem now? How come you do it and other people have failed? I don't know. Maybe uh, I use Tide and they use Cheer. I don't know. But this big Swede's going to try the 370-pounder too, Ted. Go 
a lot of pizzazz, though, doesn't he? He's always yeah. shouting and yeah. getting himself. Up. He's a really rugged guy. The more I see him, the more I respect him. His hands are not as large as John's are, but he's a little stronger in his shoulders, I think, than, than John. And I just don't know whether he's going to be able to hold onto that rope long enough so that those strong shoulders can pull it all the way to the top. Sweetie's army must be something else. No wonder they never have a problem. <laughs> I don't think they need anybody but Lars. Send them all home. Got an inch and a half rope? Yeah, just about. Got it, Lars. You got it. See, he's keeping his arms bent, whereas John kept them straight. He's using the upper body strength more than he's using the back. But I believe he... Yes, sir, he's got a terrific, terrific effort. What an effort. Both of them look like they're spent. I think they may just go ahead and split first place and go to the next event. You guys haven't backed off for much, but I thought that was a, a pretty good decision to let it go, didn't you, John, and split the first place points? Eight and a half apiece? I think the difference is a point and a half between first and splitting. And uh, considering that against the rest of the events in the competition and my hands, if I hurt them, I can't hold this ball, you know, and I have to keep sure. my hands in shape. So I my... got you. <laughs> right, the other thing, too, is you've got the tug of war that's going to be a double bonus situation for really the final event. And Lars, you want to be in good shape for that, don't you? Yeah, that's I want to. Huh? That's why we split it. Okay. One of the decisions. And so the hoist lift goes to two big blind gentlemen. Kolb and Hedlund split the first place points. And the standings now, that means Hedlund has moved past Bob Young into fourth place, Kazmaier, Reinhardt, and John Kolb in third. Would you believe that a man can make this two-story bus move by pulling it with his teeth? Well, Paul Wren, the evangelist, is going to do that in just a moment. But first, a commercial break, and then we're going to move that big rascal. Back at the World's Strongest Men competition, we have a stunt, but Paul Wren is really a legitimate powerlifter, isn't he, Terry? Yeah, he is. He's held the world record in the squat before, and most people think he's got the best chance to get it back from Don Reinhardt. What kind of a neck uh, do you have to oh, have it? Look at that. He's able to start that thing. It weighs 25,000 pounds. <laughs> How big is he? he he's about 5, 10, or 11, about 340. He's the strongest preacher in the world, no doubt. Check the transmission while you're under there, Paul. Good effort. The big bus did move. Now the two buses that have to move, bit number eight, the tram pull. Well, it's uh, not exactly a double-decker bus, but uh, Terry, what do you think about this tram pull? What kind of a uh, run does Bob Young have to make? Well, like that old football coach, to win this event, you're going to have to be agile, mobile, and hostile. <laughs> Bob, you really need this, though. You're thinking about, of course, uh, week number five when you'd like to get into that final four and get after the tug-of-war and the big money. i got to do good in this in the refrigerator race to get in the finals, and uh, i just got to have it. That's all it is to it. You're against the big guy, too. Don is very good at this event. That's true. Uh, Seems like all my events are their events, the big guys, and uh, I'm just going to have to try to beat them. How much are we actually pulling here, Terry, on this? A little train? over 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds? Yep. They're getting into the harness. I think you and I better clear the mics and get ready for action. And a definite style, I would imagine, is needed to get the darn thing started. Yeah, the men need to stay low. Now, Don has a big advantage because he's about 70 pounds heavier than Bob. Okay. And as you can see, that weight is a big advantage. Also, the size of the feet makes a difference. Cleve Dean should be great at this in a little <laughs> while, but see, Don wears a 15. Ooh, Look at him. He's got a big lead. Left on your left yep. there. Bob tried to get up too quick. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just walking with it, isn't it? Really powerful. Over 10,000 pounds. And a bunch of screaming kids that are really pulling for Don Ryan out. That's Bob yeah. Young. You stayed down. Until about halfway, and you finally got that camera kind of moving, and then you came up sort of and began to run with it. Right? Yes, sir. That's hard. <laughs> no, no. Was this as good a run as you had last year? You uh, won this event, didn't you? Yes, it was uh, a little bit shorter, but it's pretty close to the same time, I think, and it was 2,000 pounds more. You just never quit, do you, big fella? I have to stay in it. I came a long ways to compete. Ryan out's time, 24.39. Young, 30.42. They're actually racing the clock and their own tramway, right? That's right. It's a head-to-head -head competition, but they're still actually competing against the clock. Now, Cleve got up a little too quick that Cleve time. Cleve Dean has been far away from the camera. Yeah. This is Dave Johns, the Mr. Universe here. He's twice as heavy as the man he's going against. Uh, you can see the terrific trouble that a 230-pound strong man like Dave Johns is having with this thing. That gives you an idea of how much weight this really is. Well, you're right. Dave Johns is really struggling. Now, look at the feet on Cleve. You see those big 17s or 18s? He's headed, he's headed into the barn. Looks like he's going home for supper. Five platters of fried chicken coming up.
Look, cool. He's around that Georgia pig farm of yours, baby. You came out of the blocks. 29, 29 seconds. Good run. Oh, yeah. You had to we'll have get another win, though. <laughs> you had to, well, we don't know yet. You know, you might put some heat on somebody. That might get you some points and get you out of, what are you, in sixth place right now? Yeah. You got a chance to jump. I like your chances. I hope so. And you're still young and handsome, too. <laughs> And a great sense of humor. Okay, heat number three, Billy Kazmaier against Joe Duby. Now, Kazmaier's a young guy. He might have a little problem. Yeah, he's above a look. You see he's starting up too high. No, he's making a big mistake. I don't care how big and how strong you are. If you don't stay low in this event at the first, you're out, you're out of luck. He's see, Duby's got high, a lead. Yeah. Yep. See, and he keeps trying to stand up. And he, he's, it's much too early. He doesn't have the speed up enough on the tram. See, Duby's got a lead on him. Now, Kazmaier's greater strength is beginning to show up a little bit. Duby's having some trouble got up too too high it looks like yeah. far lane is joe Duby from florida billy kazma now they're just about a dead heat right now yeah but they're both the trams moving too slow they can't really bend into the weight properly and make it really go right house time was 24 3 not, nine. A, not a good time okay oxygen one of the most demanding events in the entire competition so far has been this tram pull. They, they do need that oxygen as soon as they hit the finish line. Oh, yeah. Tremendous oxygen debt in this thing. Here's John Cole now. Not too heavy in the near court, so to speak, and big Lars Hedlund a ton over in the other one. Oh, yeah. That body weight advantage is really showing in this event. Even though John's staying low and he's doing well, but... Still, he's only 260 against an over 10,000 pound vehicle. Yeah, and see, he's leaning into it. Got a great angle on his body. He's really making it move now. He's going to have a good time, I think. You realize Everybody so does better. It seems to be doing better in that lane. I was just starting to say we haven't had a winner among some of the athletes in the yellow lane yet. Uh, Commissioner of Power, Mr. O'Brien. Yes, sir. Perry, uh, what is the story? How come one lane seems to be the one everybody's winning in there. Is that just the luck of the draw in this case? Well, I think it's the luck of the draw, and also I think we're going to uh, consider, the judges are going to reconsider a, a run a runoff here with a, a switching in lanes from the blue to the gold and the gold to the blue. They seem to think one lane is faster than the other and possibly one tram faster than the other. So we're going to have a meeting of the officials and determine, uh, you know, if it's the majority rules, and if so, there will be uh, additional uh, competition among all the contestants, and they'll reverse lanes. Here are the results of that first heat in the tram pool. There's going to be a runoff heat when we come back here on the World's Strongest Men competition. Back at the World's Strongest Men competition, week number four, event number eight. And here are those heats for the second tram pull. It's found that the blue course to the left was a little bit swifter, so everybody switches lanes and now goes for a combined two heat total to see who's going to win this. Here we go. That's right out to the right. And Bob Young of the Cardinals now at the top of your screen. Well, Bob didn't think that Don should beat him as badly as he did the first time. And it looks like he is uh, at least dead even with the big guy now. Right out's up and walking, though. Yeah, he's, he's about 70 or 80 pounds heavier than Bob, but Bob's got a little lead on him. Those kids are screaming like mad Look for each other. Look at this. Over 10,000 pounds, and he's almost, Bob's almost running with it. Now, Don's making a surge here, but nope, Bob, Bob nipped him. Bob Young wins it. The combined total now, right out, 49.94, Young at 55.58. Cleve Dean, near camera. He almost takes up the whole lens at 465. That's Billy Kazmaier to the left. Kazmaier gives away a lot of weight, but he's a very powerful man. And in the faster lane, perhaps he might be able to make up. He was 36 seconds and change the first time. It looks like he's... Uh, Doing a lot better. He's leaning more into the weight now. It looks like he learned a little bit how to run the event. But Cleve, Cleve yes, sir. Cleve's tough. not giving it up. And he's got those mammoth feet on that yes, look at pavement. That. Very close. It's going to be almost. Boy, that's photo finish. Dean has given the nod by two hundredths of a second. And now the combined totals as we're into our second heat show. You're right now still the leader. Kazmaier now in fourth. Young followed by Big Cleve Dean. Okay, Lars did it well in this, got up very early, but he's against John Kolb, who can compete just about any way you want to. Yes, he can, and they've switched lanes now, and Kolb is in the, what's supposed to be the faster lane. You see, see what, how heavy that thing is, Tom? It's hard for them to even get it started. But look at John, look how he's staying down. Well, Lars is big, too, though. He yeah, is coming out. He's coming on, but 
John's got a big lead now. Look at Looks look like at he's Cole. drive. Looks like he's drive blocking, doesn't he? He's got the arms moving, getting all he has into him. No wonder Harvey Martin has trouble with him. <laughs> look at that. Lars comes on strong at the finish. Let's see these combined totals. There is some struggling going on. The reason is money and, of course, pride. Consistency by Don Reinout. His two-run total, 49.94. Lars Hedlund moving up and Bob Young in third place. But it's Reinout picking up 10 points. The old veteran moves past Billy Kazmaier in the first place in the overall standing. Lars Hedlund making a move. John Kolb still very much alive. This is championship day on the world's strongest men competition. Uh, this is the last one, Terry. Uh, today it's going to all be settled, and, and this is the first event in, uh, what is that, a 400-pounder plus? Yeah, it weighs a little bit over 400 pounds. A refrigerator, they're going to take it with an apparatus up on their shoulders, mm -hmm. run with it over a slightly uphill course, and they're running against time. And they've got to make points in this because they're fighting now for points and for pride and for money. And so they're all going to be bearing down leading into the tug of war. Uh, Don Wright, by the way, has a five and a half point lead over Kazmaier, but I thought that John Cole would look healthy at the end of uh, week number four, and, and also big Lars uh, Hedlund looked like he was still steaming, huh? Yeah, Lars won this last year, and I think he'd have to be the favorite in this event this year again. Okay, don't forget now, at, at our stunt, what's our stunt going to yeah, be? Yeah, Jess Wood today is going to try to take a, about a three-foot-long two-by-four, rough-cut mm -hmm. two-by-four, and break it over his head mm. by bringing it down sharply on the crown of his head. Hopefully the board will break and not his head. Better his than ours, right? Yes, much so. And, of course, this is the tug-of-war pit, and that's where it all may be decided here on Championship Day. Right now you'll see Don Reinhout, the leader, Kazmaier, Hedlund, Kolb, right in hot pursuit as we go to the next to the last event here at the World's Strongest Men. Number nine, the refrigerator race. What about it, Terry? Well, it's an uphill race, slightly uphill. The refrigerator, as we said before, weighs a little over 400 pounds. It's strapped onto the body, and as you can see, it has support supports on it which uh, allow the athlete to fall if that should happen without danger. Okay, John Kolb on the right. Billy Kazmaier on the left. Ooh. Oh, no. Kolb is like down. Now, let's see what it is. Can't tell. He oh, a strap. A looks like a strap. strap broke, yeah. Okay, Kazmaier, of course, didn't even look into his rearview mirror. He just steamed on home here. Pretty good shape. That is a tremendously heavy thing to have on there, huh? Well, he's going to try to come on, limp on in. Even he's just holding it there. The strap's not helping him. He's just holding it there with main strength. John Cobb, quite an effort. 34:26 his belated time. Kazmaier at 18.13. And getting some help right now. Now Cobb uh, might have an option on this and probably get a, a free run by himself. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens on that. Yeah, he'll have to look at the points and decide whether he wants to make the effort to do it again. See, the time was not good, but this is a tough, grueling part of it. This might be one of the toughest events I... Because of the equipment failure, Bob is running by himself here. Of okay. course, that's a little bit of a disadvantage to him, but since they're just running against the clock, it doesn't really matter. Hey, he's tripping it off. He's moving some. Yeah, going pretty good. He realizes he can't get into the finals. He can't get into the top four, so he's not giving it quite the effort that perhaps he could. I think for a guy that has no chance of getting to the finals, <laughs> Still, he's giving it a lot of... Moving it pretty good, though. It's like the, the line coach is yelling at him at St. Louis. <laughs> Bob Young with a 19.47. In second place. Cleve Dean. He's the only one, I guess, that's probably bigger than the... Yes, Cleve is the actually box, huh? larger than the Isa Box. People really began to pick up on this young guy. Hear the yelling good on Yeah, the he's a big favorite. Look at him. <laughs> that's about Cleve's normal pace there. I don't think he notices that refrigerator. I think he'd like to open it and get into it and find out what's in there. <laughs> no doubt he's done that a few times. <laughs> nice, fine time. Seventeen forty-five. Seventeen forty-five, Cleve. I enjoy it. I like it. Love it. You know, somebody said that when when you were practicing with this the other day, that you went back to the hotel, forgot you had it on your back. To get the <laughs> I don't think it's quite that bad. But you did say this is one of the only thing, uh, really, one of the events where where you weighed more than the event did, so you thought you might be able to handle this, huh? Oh yeah. Good job, though, huh? Thank you. You were coming Appreciate home. Trying to. Other times, the leader is Big Cleve Dean, 17.45. Hey, now the apparatus is fixed to get it. Yeah, yeah, the apparatus is fixed, and so both men are going to go. Lars Hedlund and Don Reinhardt. Now, is Reinhardt going to give it an all out one? He's got a lead coming in. Yeah, I think he wants to protect his lead, and so I think you can expect a good effort from him. But Lars, who won this event last year, is really good at it. He really seems to know just how to do those little short that. steps. Look he at that. He just trips along. 
For a guy 300 something, he is well, lost it. He can, you know, he'd be dangerous in the NFL, wouldn't he? Wow, look at the time. Lars Headland, 13.73 wins it. Don Reinhardt second, 15.44. John Cole was given a chance by the officials to run the event again because okay. the equipment failed on him, but he decided to forego that chance and save himself for the final competition in the tug of war. Did you yell at the refrigerator? Somebody said you took a bite out before you got ready and got in. <laughs> yeah, I get mad. You ready to go? I am sure. Last, uh, last event? No, it's the final. Let's take it. Okay, we got one more event. Let's check the steadies right now and see where we are. We're going to have one strongest man. Getting close because of Lars Headland's big win in that refrigerator race, getting 10 points. And the top four are preparing now for that tug of war. Bob Young in fifth place gets a $1,000 bonus. Uh, Jesse Wood is from outside Austin, Texas, a place called Round Rock. And he's quite a strong man, and he's actually going to take this 2 by 4 which I can guarantee you he's standing on, and it is wood. And he's going to prove that the head is mightier than the sword. He's going to break it right over his own head with one big yell. And this is really going to happen in and he's going to prove it to us. But before he breaks this over his head, uh, we're going to go for a commercial, and then we'll come back and get on with the stunt. It's going to be something. World's Strongest Men competition, and it's stunt time with Jesse Wood going to break that two by four. Yeah, he's going to push up with his legs and pull it down so they try to jump through the board. Oh. Right. Yeah, he got it. Got it. Jesse Woods, a legitimate powerlifter in his own right, though, isn't he? Yes, he is. He held a world record in the squat a few years ago at 165. Now he weighs about 215. And please, let's uh, be sure that the people watching don't even think about trying this on their own because it's very dangerous. <laughs> Jesse, by the way, does a lot of uh, speaking at functions in charitable organizations, visits prisons, yes, uh, does, he does a lot of good work with Yeah, them. he can bite dimes in half and a bunch of interesting things. And this is perhaps one of the most spectacular of all his stunts. Well, he's got my attention. World's strongest men, Terry, is down to four now. Four survivors of nine tough events. Don Rideout in that barrel lift. Yeah, the barrel's loaded with water and lead and lifted all the way overhead. That's 300 pounds Big Don lifted to win this event. In the middle is John Cole with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Bennett Steel. Yes, sir. Hot rolled steel. Big John Bennett farther than anybody. Back to back with the caber toss, it's John Cole again. Yeah, once again, his great athletic ability in this event. He pitched it a little farther than anybody. Watch that thing go. Halfway down the Pensy Turnpike, it's straight, too. Great effort. Billy Kazmaier decided to lift the car. And did he win the car lift going away? Yes, he did. He won it. He lifted more than the world record in the deadlift, 955 pounds. Then he got this wheelbarrow. It's, what, 700? 750 up a 10-degree grade for 100 feet. Burned the wheels off of that. Don Ryan out in the girl lift. Yeah, 1,000 pounds, a historic moment. He lifted 1,000 pounds in the squat. And six girls. John Kolb and Lars Hedlund tied in that hoist lift. 370 pounds on this. John pulled it. And Lars came back and matched him with the 370. Don Reinhout in the tram pull, all harnessed up, was the winner. The tram is over 10,000 pounds. Don is handling it. He won last year and won again. Lieutenant Lars Headland in the refrigerator race tripped home the winner. Yeah, 425 pounds the fridge weighs, and he had no trouble. He beat the field easily. Final event, of course, uh, the 10th one, and that's the old tug of war. Yeah, it's an old event steeped in tradition and they came here to decide who the best man was and I think if any event can separate this is the event. Somebody said that Don Reinhardt might just uh, lay back get a little advantage and then put it in park and st st sit it out. Yeah. They tell me he's been training against two football players that weigh 560 pounds together and that he's a match for them so he's going to be hard to beat in this event. And here are the pairings in this tug of war the final event at the world's strongest men competition. Billy Kazmaier will go against John Kolb then Don Rideout will go against Lars Headland, and then the winners will tangle later on. Now, Kolb cannot win the overall championship. That's right. Even if he wins this event, he can't win the overall competition because he doesn't have enough points. But he can affect the standings. If he beats Kazmaier in this tug, he will eliminate Kazmaier's chances to win the overall competition. He could really be the spoiler then and virtually decide who's going to win it? He sure could. I like it. You know how he likes that, that uh, underdog role. What about the sand? How deep is it? What's the strategy going to be here, Terry? It's several feet deep. These men have to uh, draw the other man, some part of the other man's body, across that line. And if at the end of one minute time limit, that 
one man has not reached the line, then whoever has the most rope over the center is the winner. What early advantage looked like John Cole. That's amazing. He's able to, I thought Kazma would walk right out with him, but he's not. Kazma is standing up, and that's a big mistake. Now, how you, much digging down can you do? It looked well, like Cole. <laughs> he's lying back, you see, but you can't lie back on the sand for more than five seconds at a time. Okay. He stayed as far back in the yeah. midline though as possible. Yeah, you get much, much better leverage by lying back as far as you can. Kazmar is should, should he's standing up. You see that? That's a big mistake. Now Cole was giving away what, 60 yeah, pounds? 60, 65 pounds. Look at that. It's in the yeah, state or court. Still a, still a fight though. But yes. time and I think endurance is on Cole's side because he's a smaller man and in but better condition. And I think what well, looks like Bill is running out of gas. Tell you, we've all time. tugged on a rope though. That could take it oh. all out of you. Look oh, at yes, this. Look at that. Not quite over yet, but oh, he's gone now. That's John it. John Cobb is the upset winner again. What a disappointment to Bill. Now John Cobb, who really has been sensational. He has never counted himself out or been out, and he may rest and have to come back and tug of war again. Last shot, Don right up This uh, is your your chance. You win this uh, this particular tug of war, you are the world's strongest man. Good luck to you, Lars. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And Lars, a uh, big man from Sweden, you have really been able to decide this thing by coming on this uh, this last day for a tremendous finish. Uh, good luck to you. Man your ropes and let's go at it, huh? Okay. Some kind of a psych job by the big Swede. He looked uh, right out, not in the eye, just like he almost with disdain. He wanted to get at it. Listen, Tom, he's ready. He wants this. He knows that if he can beat Don, He's got a chance to win the overall competition. He can come back and beat Cole in the finals. Oh boy, right First, now. he's got to beat a 350-pound Tiger. Right now, just pulled him almost out of the sand. Yeah, but look at him. He's reeling, reeling Don in now. But he's almost over the line. He's right up to the... Oh. Dangerous yeah. strategy by, by he's, Lars. He's got a lot of rope. You see, he's got he's almost over the line himself. He's working on, on right out into the rope. Now. Very risky business. One jerk, and Don could pull him over. Very close you to being over. Don's, he's got to get back up within five seconds. Hedlund's got an advantage now. Yeah. He's got the big yeah. fella down. Yes. Hedlund's working right at the rim. the time is almost up now. There's very little time left. Very little rope between them. Yeah. Right out is really in trouble. They're both playing out. Five seconds left. His hands over the line now. He's done. Yep, he's done. Lars Hedlund in a great bit of strategy. Oh, look at the guy go down. 60 seconds of terminal all-out effort. John Cole isn't through yet, but he does get fourth place, and his total money will be $4,571.50. Billy Kazmaier gets third place and over $7,500. And here's the big fellow who could win it all with his final great week of competition, Lars Hedlund. He's made a great surge. And if he can beat Cole, I wouldn't bet against Cole he's for the champion. I think the craziest thing about the tug of war competition is the strategy. I can't believe that there are several different ways you can do it and be a winner. Yeah, Lars seems to favor standing straight up, whereas John falls back and uses more leverage and uh, more athletic ability. Now, Lars also tries to work up and get too close to the middle line. Is that a dangerous thing to do? I think it is a dangerous thing to do. He was able yeah. to pull it off last time, but that sure. last one must have taken a lot out of him. He's got a weight advantage over John yeah. Cole, right? A weight advantage with probably a cardiovascular disadvantage. They're just holding right now, trying to wait to let the other one make the first move and counterattack. Cole has got the, ye the yellow ribbon on his side. Yes, he has. You see the difference? Lars is standing up where he uses just the muscles of his upper body, and John is going to the lower body. Lars, legs are stronger than arms. Lars looks like he's sort of tethering him out, like I can take you any time I want to. Lars's feet are pretty close together now. Very close. It looks to me as if, yep, John's strategy looks like it's paying off now. Oh, we've seen his fast hands. Look at almost this. Going over. It's over. He's over. It's it. That's it. Lars Reinhardt wins. And Lars can't believe it. This makes Don Reinhardt the winner. Yes, sir. He's the champion. Time after time, we've seen John Kolb, apparently out of the contest, beat men that are much larger and much more experienced. He's quite a competitor. Yeah, he won for himself, and he won for Don Reinhardt. It's just an amazing feat of athletic ability. And the big Swede, Lars Hedlund, gets second place, $9,780, to the champion whose middle name might be competitor, Don Reinhardt, over $12,000. If we might, gentlemen, could we all just give a collective round of applause for the world's strongest man, Don Reinhardt. 35 years young, pretty tough way to get it, but you got it, big fella. Thank you very much. That all goes to John Cole, but the Steelers, he's 
he won it for him, and he's just a super friend and a super athlete. And all these fellows here, are, they all deserve the, to be in the same spot I am. They're all world champions, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, there's your trophy. Terry's going to give it to you. There you are, Big Don. You, I know you trained hard for it all year long. You deserve it. Uh, in my you, book, sir. you're the strongest man in the world. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and, we, and we at CBS would like to say that uh, it has been an unusual opportunity for me and for Terry and I, and God bless all of you, all right? Don Reinhout.